Uh, okay, thank you very much everybody uh, for watching this video. This is a brief rundown of what's happening uh, with the uh, special project that's currently taking place at the moment. Um, so my name is David Duran. I'm a senior delivery manager um, here at uh, Hackett, uh, and I'm doing this presentation uh, in conjunction with Matthew. Remind me what your title is, Matthew. I'm the success manager for the resident safety team and health and services. Brilliant. Okay, so uh, this is the overall vision for the service. So the idea is to enable Hackney's historic and planned special based information to be successfully imported into our new service, Shine. Uh, so we're migrating away from our existing legacy platform, PSI, which is no longer fit for purpose, uh, and into the nice new Shine service. Um, and then for the information within that service to be available to all the appropriate staff in Hackney, so they can uh, record that they have viewed the information as part of their ways of working. So what we're keen to do is enable not only cleaners and electricians and plumbers and those folks to have access uh, to this information, so to things like floor plans and locations of where their asbestos may be uh, in our property, uh, but also for us to be able to demonstrate that they've been looking at that as part of what they're doing because that is part of their uh, official ways of working. So there are four goals. So we're going to migrate, uh, as we say, the existing aspects of information from our current products to Shine. That's happening at the moment. Uh, we're going to do some user research with people who will be using Shine to make sure that it's fit for purpose. Um, and then uh, we're going to work out, as I said before, the best way to record that people have uh, been looking at the information as part of their roles. Now, that's something that Shine is capable of doing. Uh, and in the demo in a minute, Matthew might touch on uh, how that logging happens. But the important part of this is ensuring that there's an agreed process with the teams that are going to be using the service that they're going to check into Shine to make sure that um, they're looking at the information before they go out on a property so they don't receive any unpleasant surprises. Brief uh, project update today. Matthew's going to do uh, a demo of Shine for uh, maybe 10 minutes or so. Then we'll talk about what's coming up. Uh, and if you have any questions, please just send them to me uh, through email and I'll respond to you. Uh, so quick update of where we are. So the data migration is taking place. Uh, that's going fairly well. We expect it to be complete in the next two or three weeks or so uh, for housing. Uh, we are developing a set of user stories which we're going to uh, put out to our user research panel, which we're hopeful will be a representative group of people from the kind of folks that need to go out um, into our properties uh, to go and do various jobs that might be uh, potentially exposed to asbestos if they're not aware of what's gonna happen in advance. And for folks who haven't come across user stories before, they're phrased uh, in the manner of, as a type of person, I want a thing so that I can achieve something. So an example for this might be, as an electrician, I want to know uh, what the floor plans are that show the asbestos that is uh, in any of the uh, properties that I might visit while working for Hackney so that I'm not accidentally uh, exposed to asbestos. So that might be an example of the kind of thing we're going to do. We're going to put a set of those together and then circulate those around to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Uh, we're also reaching out to other councils to see uh, what they're doing in terms of how they handle asbestos. Uh, we know there are other people who've used Shine before and we're interested in finding out how that's integrated into their ways of working. Uh, and one significant update at the moment is that support for Shine is now via the Hackett service desk and our internal application support team. So if you are somebody who uh, uses the product uh, and you have any issues, uh, then please raise them via the service desk as you would do for any other IT product. Time for a quick demo. So if you can share your screen, Matthew, and then uh, give us a little bit of a walk around of the new tool. Thank you. Yeah, okay. okay. Oh, I think I need you to stop presenting first, David, before I can do it. Oh, sorry. Two secs. Cool. There we go. Thank you. Okay, could you give us a thumbs up so you can see the screen, please? Cool, thank you. So, this is the homepage for Shine, which is our 
risk management database for asbestos. So if we go through one of the um, <coughs> functions a lot of people will be using within the council, the work request form. So you click here. You, well, whilst you're logged in, it will actually state your name, but for now I'm just using my colleague's login. The asbestos lead, this is the person that you would like the request to go to. Uh, I just want to point out here that this is only our dev domain, so it's a, it's a test like dummy server, and there's hardly anyone on the actual system. Um, but once this is established and we're using the real system, you actually have to type people's name. And you won't have to draw through hundreds and hundreds of names on your uh, mouse. So we just select myself for now. Oh, Joel, work request type. So uh, before we went through a survey request, so this time we'll go through a remediation project. So within Shine, these are types of uh, project we can manage. We've got air monitoring, remediation, and survey, and also major work request, which is quite helpful for me. So um, sending out major work requests for capital work, etc. So we go through remediation. Remediation. Uh, we've got your priority. We've got media, which is as it says immediately, uh, zero days. Uh, emergency, which is within one day. Urgent work, two days. And then just routine, which is day, uh, five days. And these are all just obviously working days. And now we search for a property. So I'm going to pick somewhere that I know that's got a lot of asbestos materials. So we say XB House, number one. The property contact. So um, <clears throat> this could be perhaps if the uh, removal contractor or whoever your residence request to has got to meet someone on site. Maybe they're meeting with a um, void surveyor or electrician or just any other trade. You could, you could select them here and just enter their uh, details. Um, is the property occupied? Obviously, tick yes or no. Property availability just to kind of expand on, on the above really. So if you want to put it as occupied, you can say, uh, please contact tenant between X time, X time. Uh, security requirements. Yeah, I mean, if there was a security gate or whatever, you might want to say you need to collect the keys from uh, Thorfield Depot or something first to get through. Parking arrangements. So property parking, private or street parking or other. I thought most places in Ackley would have street parking. So we do that. Um, electricity availability and water availability, which are two key things for asbestos removal contractor. They will always be asking, is there electric available and water? So in an ideal world, we want to be ticking both of them if we can. Ceiling height, the standard long tower, tower and an hour. Uh, most domestic property, because we're doing domestic property, would be under three meters and normally about 2.3. So standard does cover most domestics. Your work request scope. So this is the box where you'd enter uh, exactly what you want done by the contractor. So we could put, I don't know, uh, remove best off for cars throughout property. Obviously this box here, we can make this as large as we want to fit in as much detail as we can. And there is further down here, you can add supporting documents. So are there any isolations required? I wouldn't have thought when we were removing floor tiles there would be any need to isolate anything, but you never know. Um, is the decamp required? So do we want to get the tenant out? Obviously once we're removing the spare sauce, we can guess. Any reinstatement requirements? So if we were removing the floor tiles, we might perhaps ask them to put some Corex sheeting down on the floor. Move work. Uh, any health and safety requirements? You then through this box here, and again, this box is expandable. We all know that health and safety is, is huge, and you want to put as much information in as you can. High level access, so we've already said that it's just standard three meters, but if you do go into that, you tick that, and again, you can expand on what is required. A lot of spaces, floor spaces, um, floor boys, however, basements, ducts, these are all optional, and obviously, when you tick them, it gives you the option to add more detail. And we've already stated that I'm making good.
Um, so I can easily just work through that. And as I mentioned earlier, any supporting documents you might want to attach to this, you could do that. So if you wanted to attach the asbestos survey to the property to make life easier for this contractor, you could do that. Um, I would have thought that they would have access to Shine and the data search themselves, but if you were feeling extra kind, you could do so. Um, once we're happy with that, everything on there, you can click Add. As you can see, the work request has been generated successfully. Um, this is the point where you get to review your request. So you can go through everything and uh, make sure that everything you've entered is correct. Once you're happy with that, and this is where the documents would go as well. You go back here, and at this point, you can either edit it if you made any mistakes, or decommission it if perhaps you've completely changed your mind and the tenants refuse to have any work done. You can just decommission it from this point, nice and easy. Or if you hit publish, and once you've hit publish, the person you selected as the asbestos lead right at the top of that work request will then be notified that they've had a work request come through. So as I selected myself earlier, we should now be able to go up here into the data center and approval. So work requests come in for approval. Uh, do. Okay, yeah, lovely. As we can see here, this is the one that I've done, Expert House, Special Remediation. And we can download this file that we like here and just have a look at everything that's within the PDF. Um, work request that's come through, and if you want to support this onto anyone, you can, you can do that quite easily. But all the details that we entered in there earlier. Just that. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit confirm. And that's what I should see. There's loads of uh, work requests that have come through where people have been playing around on the system. We then go on to projects. Uh, this, this would then be up to the removal contractor to go into projects after they've been assigned uh, the project and they would find wherever we are. Place. So, yeah, we've got here uh, survey only projects. We've got these other tabs here remediation and removal projects, demolition projects, and analytical projects, which are the, the four categories we talked about earlier. That when you're raising a work request, it's either going to be one of those four. So, we should be able to go into here remediation and removal projects. And, yeah, there's the one I just created. Expert House, the project reference here. Property details. And we've got the documents here, September documents, any planning documents, pre start documents that uh, the removal contractor would go in and then upload their, their RAMs, which would be reviewed by um, Shine. Once they're happy with everything, they would then approve it. And this contractor can, can then go and do the work. Once the work's complete, they then uh, upload these two here, so you've got site record documents, you might have a, a daily log of, of what's going on, and then completion documents, so any uh, post-removal work completion documents, you have your waste consignment note, DVC, etc. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it for raising a, a removal project. Um, everything is, is quality checked that's going into the system by Shine, so if there was anything wrong, they've uploaded on here in the pre-start documents, it'd be rejected by Shine with comments and that's a KPI for them to amend the, um, the document and then when it comes back in they'll review again and hopefully by this point they give it a thumbs up. Um, everything within Shine is completely audit trailed, so if you go on here you've got um, audit trail here and if you just pop in a name or you can show, you see here everything that We've just done over the last half an hour's time, right from uh, when we had a new work request here, all the way up to uh, the work request being approved and it being uh, moved over to the contractor. So, what we want to look at reporting. There's 
absolutely heaps of reporting that you can do within the system, which is great for me for management information and running uh, reports on uh, our overall SpaceOps compliance. So you've got risk assessment start summary. You can search for your property group, property area, floor, room location. Um, <clears throat> we've categorized all of our assets within uh, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, eight um, housing areas. And you've got corporate property, commercial property, non domestic, domestic, block, and sub block. Uh, as you can see, also various different summaries that we can do for exports. Um, and they all just export via CSV file. So if we wanted to do a project summary of all the projects that have been raised, do that here. Yeah. I'm not on my VMware, so I don't have Microsoft Word. So yeah, all the projects that have been raised, and this is only the dev server, and obviously you can apply your own, your own filters to your own needs, what you want to look at. So your register item change, HD document summary, survey summary. So we wanted to overall look at what surveys have been done to do that here. Reinspection program, brilliant. Um, what else might we want to look at today? We've got oh, we're going to, uh, that's going to be covered by a hacker, isn't it? The troubleshooting. Got some various different job roles that we can assign people to, which will um, completely uh, categorize what people can and can't do within the system, so all the way from a basic user to a super user, which is meaning you can do absolutely everything. You can edit, delete, add, um, and all the way to just a, a what's the site operative view, where all you're able to do is really just view the first off reports. Um, and I think we're probably around 10 minutes now, so I'll stop talking. Thank you very much. That oh, was brilliant, Matthew. Thank you very much. Um, the only thing I was going to ask as a, a question on the end there was about, um, is this designed to be able to be used by folks uh, out on site? So if somebody's out actually doing the work um, in a location, can they then look up information about that place when they're there on a, on a tablet or a mobile if they have an internet connection? Yes, yeah. as long as you've got an internet connection, you can log into uh, the Shine homepage and just search on the, uh, the data center, search for your, your property, and it will pull up the latest as best of information. And so it's a, a live property register, so any cool. special removal works that we do, we update the register. So it's always it's one stop source of truth. Brilliant. So as long as anybody's got access to um, a smartphone with an internet connection, they can do all this. Uh, without needing to return to the office, but that's excellent. Okay, so in terms of what's coming up next, I mentioned previously that we're going to be creating this uh, set of user stories and circulating that round uh, among everybody. One of the groups that we're keen to discuss those with are with our colleagues in corporate property, where we're going to make sure that um, the user stories that we draft also fit uh, their needs as well. Uh, they're going to be migrating onto the, the product uh, sometime later on uh, this year. Uh, and we're going to be putting that timeline together at, uh, at some point in time. Um, so really, if you have any questions, uh, just to reiterate, my name has been David Durant. If you want to drop me a line, uh, anything that I can't answer, I'll pass on to Matthew. Um, but thank you very much for your time. Um, and we hope that was useful for everybody. <laughs>